All right, guys, just want to say before we get started, I know this isn't my normal kind of content. It's not about a gun. It's not about anything 3D printed. It's about my car, and I hope you enjoy that. If you do, let me know in the comments. And also, if you enjoyed this episode and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. We have a lot of fun here. Thank you to all of you who follow me on Instagram at Print, Shoot, Repeat and on Twitter at Printing Guns. If you're not following me there, we have a fun time there too. And I also have a Patreon, which you can subscribe to as well. Thanks again. Enjoy the episode. This is my 2011 Toyota 4Runner. And when I bought it, it was the cheapest 5th gen 4Runner in the whole entire country. I've done a lot of upgrades to it since I bought it, and today I'm going to take you through all of its quirks and features. Before we get started, be sure to check out Giggle Switches and Bids, my machine gun auction website. All right, before we get started with the quirks and features of this vehicle, I want to tell a little story about how I got it. Before we get to the rest of the video, I gotta thank KAK Industry for being the channel sponsor for PSR, also known as Print, Shoot, Repeat, but that's banned. Those words are banned on YouTube. If you didn't know, CAC means poop in Dutch and other languages also, but in American, it means quality AR parts at affordable prices. KAK has been cranking out parts for just over 10 years right here in the USA, and they just came out with this cool, three position selector that's really fun. It might save your dog from getting shot. So that's awesome. And if you wanna get 10% off your order from KAK Industry, I would never ever suggest typing in the code PSR at your checkout for 10% off. That would never ever be a thing that I would ever suggest here on YouTube. So thank you to KAK for sponsoring this channel. Back to the video. So flashback to January of this year, I was at SHOT Show 2023. <laughs> Fuck the ATF! <laughs> And I was a little bit bored on my phone and I thought, hmm, you know what, I have a flight back to my place, but I really want to see if I can find a vehicle out here because usually in this area of the country, you don't have to worry about the Toyota rust issues, right? So I was scrolling and I found on Auto Trader a fifth gen 4Runner for sale in Southern California for $10,000. That was this guy. It had 244,000 miles, but I looked around and this was by far the least expensive 4Runner I had seen of this generation. So, a little background, the 5th Gen 4Runner is what's being currently sold in 2023, and it started in 2010. So, it has been going for 13 years, the same vehicle. Now, it's kind of rare because usually after maybe 10 years, the max, that a car company will switch to the new generation. But, in the case of the 4Runner, it's been such a solid selling car that they haven't stopped selling it, and they're probably going to come out with a new generation very soon, but I didn't want to pass up the chance to possibly own the current generation 4Runner and all of the parts availability and the reliability that comes with this vehicle. So I decided to make my way down to Southern California and take a look at it. And when I looked at it, I was pretty shocked because it was one owner and a bunch of miles, as I said, a very, very clean car. With one exception, it smelled horrible in the inside. The dealer tried to mask it, but some kind of animal had urinated in this vehicle. I didn't let that deter me though. A little bit of dog piss, you know what? It adds spice to life. Despite this smell, I decided I can probably fix it with a good deep clean. Now the interior also had a little tear in the seat. It's going on 13 years. It's rough around the edges, but the next cheapest version of this car that I could find was fifteen dollars to $16,000 with just as many miles, maybe just slightly less miles. But I decided, given that this was a one-owner car and it had all of the service records, that I could take a chance on it. And that's what I did. Now I will mention one small downside. This car is two-wheel drive. It's not four-wheel drive. I know, I know. You might be thinking, why? Why would you get a 4Runner with two-wheel drive? Well, I didn't plan on using this too much for off-road stuff, but I did want it to be able to handle some bumps and handle better, and I wanted to be able to go to the mall and look like I go off-road. For right now, this is my little mall crawler, and it's rear-wheel drive. Deal with it. So when I bought this vehicle, it was very much a soccer mom grocery getter, and I've turned it into a tactical assault grocery getter. Let's talk about all the upgrades I've done to it. Now I will note that I had a $5,000 budget because I wanted to keep this whole thing under $15,000. So I had a $5,000 budget for upgrades and modifications. Because this car was purchased in Cuckville, USA, <coughs> I mean California, I wanted to make sure it was as assaulty and scary as possible. And to start, I got these 17 inch black AGP wheels. These are TRD style wheels. This is like what they come with on the TRD uh, edition of the 4Runner. But this is 
AGP, meaning they're just replica wheels. They're not genuine Toyota, but there is a benefit to them because they are eight inch wide versus the Toyota ones are seven inches. So you can easily fit a 285 tire on here. Now these are not 285 tires. 285 is about as big as you can get without doing serious modifications to these vehicles. This is a 265. It is the stock size tire, but I went with the Falcon Wild Peaks or Falcon. They're not loud tires. They feel great. And for what I do, going on back roads, dirt roads, uh, fire trails and stuff, they're awesome. Next up, the suspension of this car in stock form sucks, in my opinion. It felt like a boat. It had a ton of nosedive when I braked, and I just wanted something a little stiffer, more capable off-road, and I also wanted to lift the vehicle a bit. So I went with the Bilstein 6112s in front and the Bilstein 5160s in the back. A huge shout out I wanna to give to Modified Off-Road in Monterey Park, California. They are the homies. They are the ones that got all the parts, sourced the parts and installed them for me. And without them, I couldn't have done this. If you're in California, I feel bad for you. If you're in California and wanna lift or do anything with your vehicle, upgrade it, check out Modified Motoring. For control arms, we put in Freedom Off-Road, Uniball control arms, maybe a little bit overboard with the Uniballs, but I wanted to put control arms in there. The stock ones can get a little bit messed up if you lift it. So this lift is roughly two and a half-ish inches, and it really does change the look and feel. The driving experience with these shocks and springs is night and day. No more nose dive. There is a bit of a rake so the front is kind of still a little bit nose down as opposed to the rear, which it is what it is. I like the way it feels and I'm gonna keep it this way. All right, next up I wanna talk about this roof rack that I put on here. This is a Prinsu Designs roof rack made for the fifth gen 4Runner. If I was getting rid of my pickup truck, which sadly I did, the Toyota Tundra is no longer. I'm passing it on to another very deserving fellow. I didn't have that real practicality of having the bed, so I wanted to at least be able to strap things to my roof if needed, and I would love to eventually put a tent on here or something and do the typical overland bro thing where I camp out on the roof of my 4Runner. We'll see, but I just wanted to add this for a little bit of practicality, and I also wanted to add a little spot that I could put extra fuel because I needed to get back to my home, not in California, and I needed to drive across country to get there. So I added this little Rotopax. I don't have the jerry can on me, but this is what it's for. So the great thing about this roof rack is it is very low profile. It has a wind deflector on the front, so it's not very loud. And I installed these little handles, so it's easy for me and my manlet size to get up here. And we've got a ton of crossbars here. And that's really why I like the design of this roof rack. Now I removed one of the crossbars so that I can actually use this sunroof to pop up and shoot out of. It can be an improvised technical. When I got this vehicle, it had the ugliest, yellowy, old looking headlights I can imagine. It really dated the car, and I knew that if I switched out the headlights, it would make it look a lot better, not to mention very assaulty. All right, we're adding assault features. And one of the things you can do to assault other drivers is add projector headlights with LED bulbs in them. And that's exactly what I did. Because fuck the other drivers on the road, this is an assault vehicle. So there's not a single halogen bulb now in the interior or exterior of this vehicle because LEDs are just better, guys. Moving to the lighting in the back, I added these 2023 Forerunner taillights, which fit the 2011 because it's the same generation. And that really makes this look like a newer car as well. Another thing I did to make this vehicle more assaulty is tint the windows. Nothing like tinted windows to really scare people especially cops. Another thing I did to this car to make it more assaulty and scary is I blacked out all of the trim. So the SR5 trim of this vehicle comes with this kind of ugly flashy chrome that's kind of outdated. And so I took all of the shiny bits and turned them black with Plasti Dip. Ooh, scary, scary trim pieces murdered out. Very scary. Just like the scary features of your AR-15 that's all black and scary that's not legal in California. All right, so now we're inside the 4Runner. What have I done to the interior? Well, most of it is just creature comfort stuff, really aesthetic things, but I think aesthetics are important on your daily driver to feel good about being inside the car. One of the things that's changed the most about this generation of 4Runner throughout the years from 2010 to now 2023 is they've upgraded the infotainment system and all of that stuff. 
This doesn't have an infotainment system. It is just bare bones, raw radio. You can plug in a phone. I can plug in my phone and play songs through my phone off of Spotify without any kind of adapter. If I didn't have that, then it would be kind of a pain in the ass trying to get things to play. And it also has your good old fashioned aux input. So you could plug in a laptop and listen to music. You can make a beat in here. I added some additional protection to the seats and the back seats were fine, but the front cloth seats were pretty worn down and cloth I just don't like as much. So I got these faux leather seat covers. Now seat covers are normally, they look ass, but these seat covers are made for this vehicle and I think they fit and look great. You can tell me what you think, but they honestly look factory in my opinion. I installed these myself, it was pretty easy. You can get them on Amazon. I think they ran me maybe 200 something bucks. I think it's a worthy upgrade, makes your car feel a lot newer. The other thing I did was I upgraded the shift knob to a TRD version. Nothing big, just wanted the shift knob to look new. I mean, I touch it so much, you know, I touch that knob damn near every day. So I wanted that knob to be nice and shiny and wanted it to look good. Moving on, I added a bunch of carbon fiber trim. Now, normally that looks tacky, but in this case, I don't think it looks tacky because that is actually what's on the TRD trim of this 4Runner from the factory. I really do think that the scratches on this 13 year old car, they didn't look great and the trim just looked scuffed up and, and kind of nasty. After cleaning it, I wanted to change that and so that's where I put the carbon fiber trim and I think the carbon fiber trim looks great and that's really it for what I did for upgrades. The quirks and features of this interior, there are a couple small ones. The main one being this little party mode. There's a button here you press for party mode on the speakers and it adds sound to the back speaker so that when you open the tailgate, you can have a little bit of a party back there. Personally, I want to party all the time. So I leave it in party mode at all times. I just think it sounds better. And yes, we like to party hardy in the Assault 4 Runner. Scary, scary stuff. Now the other main interior quirk that's awesome about 4 Runners, and this has been the case in all of the generations, I believe, is you can roll down the back window with the press of a button. And you know what that means? Improvised technical. If the ops are in pursuit, the ops will get smoked out the back window with the touch of a button. Hello! All right, so those are the quirks and features of my 2011 Forerunner, along with the upgrades that I did to it. Now it's time to give it a print score. In the back of my Forerunner, I can fit eight 3D printers, 126 spools of filament, 53 AKs, 106 FGC9s, 86 AR pistols, 20 loaded RPGs, and 2,231 Yankee Boogles. Additionally, the ability to use this vehicle as an improvised technical adds to its functionality and its higher score. The sunroof allows one to pull up, pop out, and dump on the ops at unprecedented levels. The automatic rear window rolling down feature also adds a lot of versatility when those tailgaters are getting a little pesky, which gives it a 10 out of 10. Add all that up and we've got a print score of 69 out of 100. Nice. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Print Sheet Repeat. We'll see you next time. Bye bye Too small. God damn it. Too short for this shit. Gotta stand on something.
Fuck. This, 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 this. Can I stand on this? Oh shit. This, 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 this. All right, one, two, three, go. Hello. Nice. <laughs> Holy shit. Um. Okay. All right. Uh. You mind? Uh, well, I guess I can get out this way. Let's. I'll take a look at it, but I think that's. I think that's a winner.